Welcome back to Monswag Garage. On this episode, we're going to work on getting this engine block ready for reassembly. I want to get the gasket surfaces cleaned up. I want to get all the paint and scale off the side of the block. I want to get the freeze plugs knocked out. And I want to get a good cylinder home. Before we get to that, I need to take some measurements so I know what size rings and bearings I need to order. First set of measurements we want to take is on the bores themselves. We want to check them for taper and how round they are. To do that, we're going to use a bore gauge. The setup on this bore gauge is fairly easy. First thing I need to know is what this distance is here. And I'm just going to check that with my calipers. That reading is 4.022. Next, we take that measurement and we go ahead and put it into the gauge. All right, ready to take a reading. So the great thing about this particular gauge is I can click minimum and it will hold the minimum value. That's very handy because I don't have to watch it constantly. You just take it, roll it back and forward till it stops reading. You can see our final reading is 4.0014. So we only have 14 10 thousandths of wear at the top of the bore. Now this isn't the only reading I'm gonna take. I need to know if it's round. So I'll reset my minimum and I'll take another reading 90 degrees parallel to that, perpendicular. That's the word I was looking for. 90 degrees perpendicular. Some words are big and hard to understand. Oh, guess. So here I get 4.0001. That is essentially nowhere. But it does tell me that I am just a little bit out of round. I'll have to check with the book and find out what the tolerance is for how much I can be out of round. But I'm pretty sure we're safe. Now that we've got those two measurements taken, I need to take the same measurements both at the middle and the bottom of the cylinder. Those are going to tell me whether my cylinder is tapered or not. So now I'm going to move on to my crank journals. I'm going to go ahead and use my stainless steel caliper to do this. I understand this is not the best tool for this job, but it is the tool that I have. The reason it's not the best tool for this job is because these sharp edges here will nick your crank journals if you're not careful. You don't want that. I'm gonna start with my main bearing journals. Helps if you turn it on and zero it, dummy. There we go. Can you read that? There yeah. So we're on and zero. So I'm going to very lightly, very carefully, just take my caliper on the journal, looking to make sure that I'm parallel. Slide it straight up and off. Maybe, and get a reading of 2.8125. As I am also checking these for out of round, I will now take the same measurement, 90 degrees parallel to that. Come off this one, 2.8110. So only 15 10 thousandths off. I'd say it's pretty round. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of these measurements. Ta-da! Measurements are complete. Don't mind all this over here. This was just me being a knucklehead. Knucklehead! <laughs> now that I got my numbers, I can compare them to the numbers in the book, figure out what size bearings and rings and all that fun stuff that I need, and get our rebuild kit on order so we can get this thing back together. Which leads us to my least favorite part of this whole engine rebuilding process cleaning the damn thing. Yay. So the deck here still has a ton of gasket material on it. We're gonna get that off. Super scraper. Works pretty good. Super Scraper did a really good job, but in order to get these things spotless, we're actually gonna run over it with a paint removal pad. I have used this technique before to clean gasket surfaces, so I know it doesn't damage the surface. I use this on my intake manifold gasket surfaces and my carburetor surface when I put the four barrel carburetor on the 273.
after the paint removal pad, as you can see, we have a very nice, clean, shiny surface. So we don't have to worry about any impurities getting into the gasket. I mean, this whole thing is gonna be cleaned after all the cleanup, deep clean. So worry not. And just to verify that we still have a nice, flat, clean surface, taking our straight edge, going across and looking for light underneath. I also have a feeler gauge here. It's the smallest one I have. It's a thousandth. Just try to run it up underneath and I'm getting nothing. I was getting some catching here earlier, but it's actually because I was at the edge of this coolant passage here. Next up, we're gonna hit our china walls with the paint stripper, get those nice and clean. And then we can work our way around to the timing cover gasket, flip it over, hit the oil pan gasket surface, and it'll be time to work on the side of the block. I know some of you are saying, I see sparks fly. That means you're removing metal. That's true, but it's very, very small amount. I can still take our feeler gauge, run it across here, and I'm not going underneath, and I get no light coming through when I look this way. And with our gasket surface is cleaned up, we're gonna move on to the block itself. So you can see, the block's not in horrible shape. Pretty much all the paint is flaked off though. And we actually have some spots that are scaling and rust. So we need to get all of that off, get that nice and cleaned. Uh, until we're ready to prime and paint, we'll just cover it down with WD-40. I'm really interested to try the super scraper on this scaly stuff here and see how well it takes this off. about you, but I am sold on this super scraper. This thing is doing a phenomenal job at taking off the scale and the rust and the paint. What do you think? Is the super scraper the right tool for the job? I don't like it. But if you know a better way to do this more quickly, more efficiently, let us know down in the comments. So after the super scraper, we went over it quick with the wire wheel and then covered it over with some WD-40 to keep that rust from coming back while we move on and do the rest of the engine. I would actually like someone to stay and watch to the end of the video, so I am not gonna bore you with all that cleaning. So with the rest of the block and the gasket surfaces cleaned up, time to start knocking out these freeze plugs so we can replace them. Now I'm fairly sure this engine was rebuilt at some point, so I don't know if these are bad, but when I redid the 273, I didn't replace the ones in the heads. And after a couple of heat cycles, they started leaking and ended up having to replace them anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do it. Getting these out is usually a pretty simple affair. Just take your screwdriver, put it on the edge there, give it a couple of smacks with the hammer, and that thing will just turn sideways. And you grab the lip and pull it out. Your needle nose, grab this bad boy, and yank it out. What in the hell is this? It's almost like peanut butter. That stuff is all inside here. Well, I don't know. Is this a problem or a feature? Anti-rust, because other than that stuff, it looks really good in there. If you know what this is, or if it's supposed to be in there, leave a message down in the comments. This is only my second engine, and 
and this definitely was not inside the 273. I'm gonna go ahead and knock the rest of these out. Okay, looking at this again, I am pretty sure that's not supposed to be in there. That's nasty. So I got the rest of the freeze plugs knocked out and I was taking off the oil filter adapter plate. And I think I figured out why there was so much oil and gunk around this adapter. Once I pulled this plate out, there was no gasket at all in here. So that's something we're gonna have to remedy. It's nice and light now. So hopefully it won't sink. Oh no, it's gonna sink. What if we drag it? Oh, this works better ish. All right, time to get this thing cleaned up. I have some gunk, engine degreaser. I'm gonna spray this thing down, let it soak while I hook up the pressure washer. We're set up. Let's get her clean. All right, it's all cleaned up. You blow it dry mostly. Gotta dry it off, soak it down with a heavy coat of WD-40 because it's already starting to flash rust. We're gonna let WD-40 do its job. There, she should be pretty well protected. So there's two more things that I see that we need to do to this block to get it ready to put back together. This is not a race build. This is gonna be just a weekend cruiser, maybe go to some car shows. So I'm really not worried about it being absolutely perfect. However, I do want to take care of some of the things like this. Remember when we pulled that head off we had this nice discoloration here on the cylinder wall now I don't actually feel anything it feels nice and smooth but I do want to get that taken care of so cylinder honing that is one of the two things that we need to do the other thing is we need to replace these cam bearings because if you stuck around to the end of the last video you would have seen when I found that that is a chewed up cam bearing, and I'm pretty sure I did that when I pulled the cam out. Unfortunately, we can't do the cam bearings today because the cam bearings and the tool won't be here until tomorrow, but we can get the hone done. Start by wiping out any excess dirt. And as you can see, there's still a good bit in there. We don't want any large chunks in there to catch on the stones and gouge the wall. That would be bad. So for this job, I've got a couple of tools I like to use, uh, a little bit of motor oil. This is what I used on the 273 and our three stone hone. So to start this off, I'm just gonna take a little bit of oil, put it in the cylinder, and wipe it around. Also gonna take some of this oil and get it on the stones. So when you do this, you don't actually wanna pull it up too far. Otherwise, your hone will fly apart. And that's what I was talking about. Now that that's cleaned out, old, old, old. Oh, new and shiny. I like it. And we just need to wipe it out, get some more oil in there so it doesn't rust up and we're good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the other seven. We'll see you in a bit. Well, there we are. Nice new shiny cross hatch and all our cylinders. If you look at number four here, you can still see a faint trace of that line that was in there. But again, like I said, you can't actually feel it. Uh, nails don't catch on and it. it doesn't even feel rough. I guess we'll know if it's a problem or not when we get it put back together and get a compression test. 
So aside from changing out the cam bearings and installing the new freeze plugs, that's all I can think of right now to do on the engine block to get it ready. However, we still have plenty of other things to clean, but I think that is gonna be for another video. Thank you for joining us. For the 218 of you now that have subscribed, thank you. I appreciate it. If you're interested in seeing videos about the car that this thing is gonna go in, check these out right here. I got a whole playlist full of 67 Dodge Dart. Stay tuned, more stuff coming. Vaya con Dios, muchachos.